Welcome to the Kendall Report. In yesterday's live stream, I went through a lot of scenarios talking about the infrastructure stimulus bill that's out there, the 2.2 trillion. And I'm going to continue that theme as we go through the next several weeks, because I believe that's where we're going to need to focus to capitalize on the cash flows that are going to be coming into the economy. And this is a multi-year situation. Make sure you watch at least the first hour of the live stream. As we come into Thursday, there's not a lot of economic reports coming out, but today is the big day. On Thursday, we'll see the claims come out, expected to show 690,000, and then the continuing claims came out around 3.8 million. I expect to see that still decrease. If it did get under around 3.2, that would be significant. That's the next key number to watch for. For the most part, that number shouldn't have much effect on anything. As I've discussed, we had an RXT sell signal on Monday. And what that tells us is that we get a couple days sideways. So we had Tuesday and Wednesday sideways. Overnight, we're seeing some pretty robust action compared to what we've seen most of the week. Last I saw, we were up about 16 plus handles. We're starting to move up towards the R2, R3 levels on the weekly and starting to get a little frothier already this week. It looks like we might attempt to try the 4100 level before this week is over. The market momentum continues to be solid. We're seeing a number of the technicals continue to get a little better, suggesting we're going to move up toward that higher end of the weekly range. But what we've been witnessing over the last couple of days is very lackluster trading, very low volume, not a lot going on. So we'll, this looks like that's about to change with tonight's action and we're likely to get some follow through into Friday. And it'll all come down to these numbers for the most part. That's going to be the one key thing that is going to affect the sentiment this week. The other thing that continues to happen, I keep telling you about this, is that we had in our database, 882 new buys, 196 sells, and we've moved up over 40% now on the bullish percent level. I'll talk more about that in just a minute. But as we start to come into the end of the week, it looks like we're going to see some strength, at least it's set up that way right now. We may actually be seeing the top end of the strength overnight. We'll see how that comes in in the morning. But I will set this all up in the technical section. So let's go ahead and take a look at the charts, see how they're set up for Thursday. As I go over the WaveTech database, we're in the Portfolio Expert platform, going into the internal web browser. As we look at the numbers that came out, as I mentioned, we had 882 new buy signals between the models 1.2 and 3.2. There were 196 sell signals. The bullish percent moved up to 40.13. So there's now 6,588 symbols with short-term trends to the upside. So there's still a lot to come in. There's 9,800 symbols out there yet. And typically, like I've been talking about, we'll get up to around somewhere between 68 and 72 is a normal place we would go. But I'm expecting to see this one get a little more frothy, maybe 80% or more. So we'll just watch how this thing starts to roll in. But we are set up for some strength in the morning and Thursday's action, if it does finish higher, we could see this database move back above the 42% level. I've been talking about that for several days. And what that suggests, if we get above 42%, that there will be a sustained rally and we'll continue to see more traction in the markets. This suggests that there will be a very robust participation level as the markets go forward. As we look at the S&P, the futures are now up 18.75. They've been a bit stronger. They're up about four more handles, about 22 handles up on the session. We've seen a high-low range of 4092 to 4072. As we look at the market grid for today, we're going to see that we've already printed up right at the R3 number, which is 4094, high 4092, as I just mentioned. On the downside, 4062 is S1. 
I don't see us expanding to the downside here and reversing. As I casually mentioned in the opening comments, is that we may be printing up at the extreme of the session today. The PPMs have moved into a very robust state. We have PPM1 at 0.47, PPM2 at 0.42. And the thing that I was discussing yesterday is this 10 period moving average is now at 4016. It will be at 4030 on Friday or better. And that's going to be your major support now. So now we have key support just below the markets. And it looks like with the momentum that's starting to build here, we're likely to see a 4100 print. And the interesting thing that's happened is the market grid has stayed relatively flat over the last three sessions. So if we did get above 4100 and closed above that, we'd end up with another RXT sell signal. So I'll be watching that as we come into the close tomorrow. As we look at SPX, it has continued in the sideways zone. As we look at the market grid for today, 4100 40, is R3, 4107 is the RTX number. So just seven sessions ago, I was talking about getting to 4100. We're here already. And it is likely, as I covered in the live stream today, that we're heading toward at least 4,200 plus and the possibilities over the next couple quarters going to the 4,600 handle. I know everybody's talking about all the money printing and everything that's going on, that there's some kind of negative situation going on, but that is not at all what's happening here. The trends remained very robust. The next market that I'll cover is the NASDAQ. Similar to the S&P futures, we're trading just below the R3 number at 13,750 with a high of 13,736. If we do print through the R3 number, then the next level is 13,794. That would be a very robust move. But the as we review the PPMs, you'll see that PPM1 is now at 0 0.72, 0 0.36, and these are very robust numbers, and PPM3 is about to break through its second derivative. As I've been talking about, my expectations are that we will print an all-time new high and actually start a new sequence up. Just a quick mention on the spread. As we look at the Russell NASDAQ spread, it continues to collapse. We're seeing the Russell futures up about 0.76, and the NASDAQ up a little bit more. So they're still losing ground, even though the markets are showing uh, upward movement. So my expectations for the NASDAQ, the downside has been satisfied, but the S1 R3 is what's going to print. And this is why I mentioned that we may be at the upper end of the range for the session. So there may be a pullback early in the session and then a retest to see if we can get back above this R3, maybe the RXT number on the upside. So the extreme downside for today is definitely S1. So S1, S3, we've actually really already printed that. So it's going to be interesting to see how the session unfolds. If we do get above 13,794 on a closing basis, that would give us an RXT sell signal. The final market that I'll cover tonight is gold. We're trading right at that 40 period moving average right now at 18, right at 1837. The PPM is down 0.14. There's about a 60% probability that we'll get above this. Just above this level is that in that 1840 level, I'll cover this in a second, and the weekly chart is some further resistance. So there's still a lot of overhead resistance. As we look at the high overnight, it was 1746. That's right at R1. We could see a 1749 level. But we're starting to back off a little bit off of that line. And the low has been 33. So S2 is 1734. So we've already seen an S2. And we printed just about an R2. So the overnight action is stealing the thunder for Thursday's trading range. So we could see just some chopping here. Because of the resistance on the 10-week moving average that is there, you'll see that the PPMs on the daily are not accelerating. They're actually decelerating as we get to this level. So let's take a quick look at the weekly chart. And the weekly chart 
shows that the 10 period moving average is at 1752. So it's a little above the, the 1740 level. That would be an R2 print. We basically have satisfied an S1 R2 for the week already in gold. But we're seeing the PPMs on a weekly starting to turn up. And I do believe that this is setting up a very bullish pattern. I talked about this uh, several days ago that we're going to see this market start to move up in this Fibonacci range. So as we look at the Fibonacci numbers, they come in at 1776 would be a, a 0.236 retracement. And that goes from the highs that we made in last July. And so we're definitely seeing a pattern setting up. I think we're going to move into 21 period moving average. And then ultimately, as I mentioned in last night, we're going to see the 1800 handle again. And it looks like this thing's setting up. There's still at least one more week of action in this range below the 1750, 1763 level I've been talking about for several days. This will complete the video for tonight. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you tomorrow night. Hey folks, if you enjoyed this content, make sure you subscribe, hit that like button and the notification bell so you'll know when I do these videos.